Hello and welcome back. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of the Golden Horde. We are Great Horde, apparently. We're no longer Golden Horde, we're Great Horde. Playing on the uh, the open beta, I backed up my save and we're trying out patch 1.19, the Denmark patch. So we have all kinds of new stuff. We've got um, new zones of control. We can see areas more clearly, sort of, on the map, I guess, kind of. Yeah, yeah, that looks like, yeah, you can see, like, kind of areas. They're, they're more clear. We're going to pay a lot more attention to the area's map mode, because that's uh, apparently how Zone of Control now works. So, we'll see if we can figure it out. One of my favorite changes, I'm not going to go through the whole patch notes or anything, but I love this. This tooltip will show you when you will arrive, so you don't have to click and then check over here. It's expected to arrive on May the 27th, you can just hover over this. We'll arrive on the 27th, we'll arrive on the 19th, we'll arrive on the 14th, on the 15th. However, if you want to see a long distance target, you still do have to hover over it and do it this way. August the 31st, um, so that's multiple provinces away. It'll only show you one province adjacent, which is kind of stupid. <laughs> if, you're, if I'm being honest, it's like, why would you implement it for just one province over? Why not just say, the army's here, how long would it take me to get to here? Like, it's like, good job, Paradox, you took the half measure. <laughs> just make the whole damn thing. I mean, okay, whatever. I'm gonna try to avoid complaining. We have Theodore and Pretender Rebels who are just marching to another province in Theodoro. One big change in this patch is the... Um, the change to the way that Liberty Desire works. I remember there was a number of episodes ago where I kind of complained a bit how um, it's stupid that there were breakpoints in uh, Liberty Desire. So like a, a vassal would get up to 100 Liberty Desire and all of a sudden just be like, F you! And they'd hate you. And so they decided to scale it. Um, you now get 0.5 Liberty Desire per one development. So now instead of having 25% Liberty Desire, I have 86.5. Yay! <laughs> so it's better in some ways, worse in others. It's at least it at least it doesn't have these big huge breakpoints though, so that's good. Altogether, we have like 400 Liberty Desire to, to bleed off of this guy. It's gonna take forever to make Persia happy. However, I did learn that um, if we want to, we can do development in their provinces, and that will lower their Liberty Desire by five percent for each click. However, then we have to pay Diplo points to integrate the development that we did. So it's possible. I'd, I could I could basically do development like I think it was 80 clicks of development will actually bring Persia down to a happy level. But then again, 80 clicks of development will give me another 40 Liberty Desire because it's 0.5 Liberty Desire per development. So it's not actually 80 clicks, it's probably like 88 to offset it. And then another couple to offset those. So it's, uh, yeah, so 80, we'll call it 89 clicks. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and just play. I did update the, uh, the, the Stellaris font mod, um, the guy who made it uh, hadn't updated it yet, and this is the beta patch, so I updated it. But I think I did it in a much smarter way, I don't know. Um, there's a few alignment issues here and there. But when I was going through the files, I noticed that he, um, he like, manually replaced almost every instance of the Vicky 2 font, or the Vicky, the Vicky font that was used. And I just changed the, the target location of the Vicky font, so I just said, instead of using the Vicky font, when it says to use the Vicky font, use the Solaris font. And it just seems a whole lot simpler that way. It was like five clicks and then I was done. So we might run into a couple issues with alignment, but for the most part, um, everything in the, sh in the game should now be using Vicky 2, except for like certain things that we used Arial font instead of Victoria 2, like um, the font on the map here, 2.6. That's the, I think, Arial font. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and take care of our rebels and see if we can dive back into playing the game. There's a new screen here. It's a little bit more clear about how long this will give us more liberty. It tells you how much unity you will gain by by doing this. So that's useful. Um, tells you the number of months still. You can fabricate claims via province now by clicking on this if you have the points. So that's cool. And uh, yeah, yeah. Also, apparently the Golden Horde can now um, reform to the Golden Horde, which is a new decision we can take, which gives us permanent claims on stuff. And we also get a, a new set of ideas, which are slightly different than, than the generic Horde ideas. So this is definitely something we want to work towards. Or toward, rather. So, Tiver. It's like, we need to expand quite a bit, right? Anyway, um, like I said, we gotta start playing this. Plane speed, three. While I get my bearings straight, we have li subjects with high liberty desire. We gain tribal conquest. Um, Muscovy has broken their support independence treaty with Persia. Well, that's nice of them. Maybe that will make Persia less, uh, less liber- liberious? Li li liberty desiring? Yeah, all vassals' power went down to, to 41, down from like 90-something. So that's good. I mean, he's still disloyal, so I don't know why he's not doing that. No military access for you or you. We've got a 30 stack of Timrid Separatists to deal with. That's going to be fun. Combat width is no longer reduced by terrain. Something worth remembering and, and memorizing now. We have lots of Separatists all over the place causing issues. The Timrid Separatists are going to cause the most, I think. But we've got uh, 
12.6k up there, and then the Theodoran Pretenders shouldn't bother us. However, they are going to stop me from integrating, um... Integ integrating this guy. Notice that we can't make progress because the capital is occupied, so that's unfortunate. We do have the, uh, countries who wish to hire an Atiari. Well, we have a few issues of our own right now, thank you. Okay. We have gained the Trail Conquest against Muscovy. There can be no peace! Show superiority! Show superiority! Do it! Show the superiority, it says! <laughs> so, we're gonna probably see a few weird things happen. Um, based on importing the save from 1.18. Oh god, they're coming in here. Son of a gun. 17th, and he's gonna be there on the 15th. Can I put, like, a leader in charge? No, we're in hostile territory. 17th. 17th, 17th, 16th. We can get there. 16th. No! We're one day off! You dirty bastards! I hate these separatists so much! Oh my god! I am just getting, like, hosed by this. There goes 4k calf. So that's fun. Like, they, they won't survive. There's like 0% chance that's gonna work out for me. Okay, that's a little bit problematic. Maybe that's why he didn't do that. That one's a little bit tricky to read. Um, hmm... Yeah, I might have to worry or work on this in a little bit here. Royal marriage is rarely a matter of love. Rather, it is a diplomatic opportunity which is not to be wasted. It is also of great importance that the future consort is of suitable status, and it is advantageous if she, if she or he is a foreigner so as not to disturb the balance of internal politics. However, even a con can become love-struck. Then all matters seem to melt away. From his viewpoint, at least, a local from the Super Provinces caught his eye. So we could get a new consort, a 221. See, everything, everything aside from this has actually looked really quite good. So I'm gonna probably mess with, with this one between episodes, see if I can figure out why it's looking like that. Um. Now, we're gonna marry Lowborn. Yeah, you guys are screwed. There's just no way. Or my concern is that they're not actually going for this target, they're gonna march through. Oh my god, we're allowed to retreat? Are you serious? No way. That's crazy. So event decisions. Note gotta note that 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 problem. We only have 25 combat width, which is their combat width as well. If I park all of these troops in one location, I think we can probably take care of their army. Our total regiment right now, our force limit's 25, combat width is 25, so... If we can reinforce a little bit, we should be able to take care of this. We're making some money, I mean, at least we have that. Theodoro has just collapsed, they have uh, entered a new era by adopting a new form of government. Our royal marriage has ended, they have a 565 leader. That's pretty good! Good job, Theodoro. I'm, I'm impressed, I have to admit. Speed 4. I just want to get these rebels taken care of. Okay, so Theodoro is yet again being integrated. Uh, 3 per month, 4 per month, we're looking at May and May. Look at that! Hey, it synced it up for me! Very nice of it. Thank you, game. We appreciate this. Wait, what? Oh, Royal Marriage. Okay, I thought he was asking me for Kantatiari. Ooh, nice condom. Okay. Let us see here. So this, this whole fort mechanic thing, like, forts are cheaper now. They cost half as much to maintain. Um, a fort used to cost uh, one ducat a month while fully maintained. Now they only cost a half ducat to maintain, which makes me think they only cost quarter ducats in mothball status, which means that we should possibly try to keep some now. I don't think we actually have any. I've, you know, in this campaign I deleted them all. I'm kind of wondering, maybe I should just start a new campaign based on everything that's changing with this patch. But um, I kind of wanted to get this achievement. This was an achievement run, right? Yeah, it was. Of course it was. Uh, let's see. We got Time Bandit! That's great! Now, there's there's something in here. The Great Con, that's what we wanted to get. Well, let's see. We're not full strength. Let's wait one more month. We are building up Spy Network strength right now against the Poland. Not really sure why. And how do our vassals feel about us right this second? Well, they're both quite loyal, so... Okay, you are crossing a river into Charjui. 
We can be there 15th, 21st. We have three maneuver versus your two maneuver. We can avoid the river crossing. We could just go fight you with our shock advantage and flat terrain. It's too bad I couldn't have gotten there before him. Um, so that's fine. Let's wait and we'll arrive on the beginning of the next month. Let's go now. That's really handy that you can just like keep your mouse cursor hovered over the province you want to go to and wait until it shows the November 1st or 2nd instead of having to like do the math. So anyway, they have a larger army than we do, but we are at maximum combat width right now. So hopefully our morale damage is nice. We take care of these separatists. All right, the job is done. Grab our infantry and have them go on take back territory duty. These Oirat pretenders will not bother us and our cavalry do not need to be this wide. Do we still have the guy who gives us combat width? Yes, cavalry flanking ability plus 50%. We still have that. So, 13, we would normally want to have 17. Now we want to have 19. So let's take, um, let's take, we're going to shift consolidate, leave the damaged ones behind, and just take 19 up to deal with these guys. And this other one stack can go take care of some of the occupations as well. Okay. We are going to get things taken care of here. We're going to make some money. Excuse me, why are there Timurids in my territory? And what are they doing? The Timurids appear to be sieging back my province against the Timurid Separatists. <laughs> Let me get this straight. The Timurids are unseaging land that is occupied by Timurid Separatists that want to join their country. I'm going to wait and I just want to see if they actually will complete this task for me. Because it looks like they are. They're unseaging my land for me. Brandenburg has civil war. That was so nice of you, Timurids. I I don't know what to say. Um, granted, he is at war, right? So he's he's in my territory, but that doesn't make sense that he would do that at all. So thank you, I guess. No decisions to take. We're working on humanist ideas right now. We have a cheap advisor. Uh, that's good. Diplomatic reputation guy is good. Second diplomatic reputation guy is available. We have lots of people to choose from because we've got uh, innovative ideas. Lay maintenance modifier guy is pretty good. Policies. Now I might actually consider making forts, so maybe that policy will work out for us in the long run. We'll see. Or at pretenders have crossed our borders. They should not be actually going for any of our provinces, just marching through. That is the hope anyway. Let us... Uh, Control group won this army so that I can hot keep myself over there. Timurids want military access. Haha, very funny. You already have military access, apparently, because of the uh, the new system. So this is the the this area, right? And so let's let's use the fort map mode for a second and see if we can just try to figure this thing out. Um They have a level one fort here. Level one forts do not do zone of control. So there shouldn't there should be no zone of control, it's just neutral area. And I believe the way that it works is you always have military access in a neutral area. No, that's not true. I cannot move here. You don't own this province, but you do own provinces in this territory. You do not have military access. You don't have military access. Okay, well, let's go to war. We'll, we'll see if we can figure out military access and zone of control stuff. I think it was, maybe it was non-neutral territories. Like, provinces that you're at war with, you always have military access to. Which makes sense. I don't know. They're, they're trying to make the whole thing a lot simpler. Look at that. Um... Oh, right, he had a cannon. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. He has a cannon. That's why we don't have the, the full flanking on these two guys. We are flanking like crazy. World of five. Nice job, Mansoor. Another infidel. I really need to get this fixed. We're going to continue to lose piety because we are already close to nearly nothing, which is great. Oh, no. My keyword shortcut is not working. Oh, it's in hostile territory. That's why. Right. I know how this game works, I swear. I've played it once or twice. All right. Unrest. 50% Circassian Separatists. Ag something. Eddy We have unrest over here to deal with. Okay, in the Georgian region. And okay, we can bring this army that way. And we certainly don't need this many troops doing this cha this task. Looks like our vassal in Isni Novgorod might actually be taking these, these holdings back for me. So let's just let him do that then. And I will focus on... Rebellions over here. Poland has decided to pay off all debt for the Mamluks. Nice of him. This is new. I like this. Base missionary strength. Nice to see. I love it. This is a very good, like, 
cosmetic slash user interface, ease of use type patch so far. And it's still in open beta, which means that, um, number one, you can, you can test it out, and number two, they are probably going to continue to make more changes, right? This is not the full-on released version. So Jean Pura wants some Condottieri. Let's just see what kind of Condottieri they're interested in. They did not, however, make a change to the whole you got caught fabricating and now you have to wait three months thing, which I'm still just desperate for a change on that. I wish it didn't block you out. I hate things that block you out from action. I just hate them. I would much, much, much prefer it if it would just be like, okay, there goes 25 spy network strength, you got knocked down to the lower level and for three months you don't generate stuff. And then just let me leave the damn diplomat there and have him do nothing. I'd rather do that than assign him for three months and min-max him for three months. It's just such a break in gameplay. Anyway, you will hire troops. You are willing to pay 0.6x. You're in debt, and the quality of the troops is apparently not very high. Um, we cannot give you our guy because it is our personal ruler. We have um, a 1, 2, 3, though, available. Let's see um, if we could maybe make some money here, because I don't think we're going to war for a little while. We have war exhaustion? No. Uh, war Exhaustion is actually looking quite good. Truces? Afghanistan is in 38. Genoa. We've got uh, Molten. Still no truce map mode, which would be nice. November of 39, so three years on them. I think I... Did I read about there actually being like a... A truce? Something in the past. I read the whole thing. We don't actually have a truce with with Sind right now, so this would be a great way to get maxed out on negative piety. I mean, we're almost there, but we practically do it. What are we doing on tech right now? We have an institution penalty due to colonialism. Colonialism has not spread to us at all. It is working its way in down here. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have given that land to Theodora. That was a mistake. In hindsight, Insight, which is 2020. Uh, shouldn't have done that. Molten will not honor a call. We have Korchin in Mongolia. Oirat are getting completely boned here by some pretenders. So they're just going to change their ruler. They also should be picking up autonomy from these sieges. Their land is probably pretty crap looking right now. You're not going to take care of the other province for me. Why, why not? That's so rude of you. You're going to help me out with one, but not the other. Why you do this? Why? Why would you do this to me, hmm? Let's unappoint our leader so he's less likely to die. And let's just go see now with the Jean Pur guys. If I were to give you, like, a ton of troops with that leader, you're not willing to pay too much. The issue here is probably you have, don't have enough money up front. You only have 59 ducats up front. See how this has actually even changed the font of, like, these little tiny things in here now as well? I don't remember if that one was set with the previous iteration of the Stellaris font mod. Yeah, we can rent it up to 25 units. Um, I really want to get out of debt, is the thing. Hmm. Part of the problem is that if I rent out Kondatiari, I won't have troops to put down rebellions. So, let's take a look and see what the largest rebellion we could have would be. 11k, 11k, rise any separatists or 17k. We'd want to have at least 17k troops available, and... Thank God we didn't actually lose any men to that other thing. Our force limit's ridiculous, by the way, now. And I think part of that is, uh, this is new. I'm very excited about this. Every province provides you with a bonus based on its trade good now. So salt is giving us local defensiveness. Salt, salt, salt. Got salt all over the place. Uh, this wool is giving us local ship cost, minus 10%. So unfortunately now we have to pay close attention to which provinces we build our ships out of which is annoying. They actually got rid of that at one point, which was awesome, because then you could use every province, and now they've added it back in. Grain gives land force limit plus 0.5, so that's probably where most of our force limit increase has come from between patches, is that every single province we have now that has grain are all giving us 0.5 force limit, and we have tons. I mean, it's ridiculous how many provinces we have that are giving us this extra force limit. Look, it's force limit 1.29. We get almost as much from grain. I bet in some provinces we get more force limit from the grain than we do from development. Look at that. Plus 0.5. That's crazy. So now, when we look at our actual force limit, it's showing the vassals, 1, 2, 3. Independent nation gives us a base 6. And then provinces plus 51.2, 51.14. Yeah, it's, it's just all from the extra grain provinces. Our force limit is crazy high right now.
Okay, max promoted cultures. Yes, we're going to take that. Rooting out corruption. We currently have 0 0.55. It's not increasing. We can have positive events right now. Let's go ahead and root it out, though. Slowly here. That'll take five years at that rate. Corruption does reduce unrest now. That's a new a new change. National unrest minus 0.1. It's minor. Up to a maximum of minus 20 if you have 100 corruption. This is one of the only things that's annoying me here is the, the alignment of the administrative power indicator with this Stellaris font mod change that I did. So, anyway. Okay, I'm going to take a break here. I'm going to go see if I can fix that issue with event pop-ups and uh, maybe I'll try to fix that other alignment issue with these and we'll go from there. So, thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next episode. See you soon.